Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this online session in which we're going to be talking about energy storage in Italy. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on the opportunities in the utility scale market. Uh, if you are working in Italy or you're looking at the Italian market, you already know that uh, energy storage is going to be a massive, important component of the Italian market. And this is because even though Italy has come to the renewables race perhaps a tad later than other countries in Europe, uh, they are really going renewable at a very, very fast pace, which means that by 2030 and then by 2050, according to their national uh, plans, are going to have an immense uh, amount of energy produced by variable renewable, mainly wind and solar, which is why uh, in order to make sure that the grid is stable, and dispatchable uh, energy storage is going to be needed. Um, but you're not going to hear about energy storage in Italy from me today. I have two experts here that I'm going to introduce you in a minute. Before, I'd just like to ask everyone who is connected to please introduce yourselves uh, using the chat uh, on the right hand side. Uh, and just please uh, introduce yourself your uh, company and where you're joining from. Uh, I think most of the people today are going to be coming uh, and joining from Italy. However, I'm sure that we have a lot of European and uh, other people also interested in this market. So far, we've already had you know, someone from Tunisia. So clearly there is interest in this market uh, from everywhere. I myself, my name is Belen Gallego. I am uh, from the RankMath by ATA Insights team, the organizers of the event that you've seen the video at the beginning. And our energy storage in Italy, in in Rome, is going to take place uh, on the 16th, 17th of April. And these two people that are here today, as well as many others, are going to be participating as speakers and attending. So, you know, I uh, urge you all to download the information and take a look at it if you're interested in the market. And without further ado, because it's now been three minutes and a lot of the people are already here, I'd like to introduce you to the experts today. So first... I'd like to ask Andrea to introduce himself as he's going to be our first speaker. Andrea, please, if you could just shortly introduce who you are and, uh, you know, why are you speaking today? Thank you. Thank you, Belen. Good morning, everybody. I'm Andrea Marchese, a founding partner of Elements, um, which is a consulting firm, a market advisor specialized on the Italian market. And I will... Uh, Try to to give you an overview of the of the storage sector in Italy, the development uh, expected uh, in, uh, now in, in in place, and uh, the revenue business models for storage assets. Excellent, thank you very much, Andrea. And of course, you know, when we look at the markets and we look at uh, at revenue and everything, we need to understand where is essentially the regulation and the permit inside of things, because otherwise we're not going to get very far. For this, we have Christina here today, who knows the market inside out. Christina, could you introduce yourself? Uh, thank you, Belen. Good morning also from my, my side. I'm Christina Martorana, partner at Legans. Uh, I deal with the regulatory public law aspect. And uh, I can uh, provide you with uh, an inside overview of the regulation, also because I actively participated to the definition of the authorization uh, scheme that uh, we can uh, use today for authorizing the construction of the best asset. Excellent. Thank you very much. So, uh, as I was saying before, a lot of people from Italy, but also a lot of people from uh, everywhere in Europe. So keep introducing yourselves, please. And uh, without further ado, we're going to go into the session itself. We're going to have a presentation from Andrea, then a presentation from Christina, and we will have a few minutes to take questions at the end. If you do want to send questions, please could you... Uh, use the Q&A box at the bottom instead of the chat because they get lost, the questions in the chat, and they're really hard for us to find and follow up, whilst, you know, the Q&A is ideal for us to manage them. So I would appreciate that, please, if you could send them through there. And if you're in YouTube, there is a few people also joining us from YouTube, please just use the chat and uh, I'll get one of my colleagues to, to bring them in here. Just a reminder that we are recording this session and that both the session and the materials are going to be available and you'll get an email with a link so you can download them, share them with your colleagues and so on and so forth. Okay, without further ado then, Andrea, if you could please take your mute off, uh, share your screen and we'll begin the session.
And uh, I am delighted to see that there are so many people here today. Clearly, this is a topic that you guys are interested in. And the good news is uh, a lot more to come from us on this regard. Uh, Andrea, we can see your presentation. I can hear you, so go okay. right ahead. Okay, thank you. So uh, just let, let, let me start. As, as I mentioned before, we, we are market advisors and uh, we are uh, in the last few years, uh, the, the, the storage topic in Italy uh, arise that the interest of uh, uh, investors of IPPs, utilities. Uh, and so uh, we I will try to provide an overview given our perspective. Uh, it's a uh, market advisor uh, perspective uh, focused on the regulatory framework, the, the way to, to find the best location, also given the, the, the nodal um, services uh, that uh, will be provided uh, all over Italy, the revenue streams, and on a quarterly basis. So uh, our um, attention on storage started uh, um, I think four or five years ago, but last year, uh, the TSO um, um, published uh, the, a new scenario of the electricity system uh, to for the year 2030 in order to, to, to define which will be the, the needs of the electricity system in order to, to cope the, 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 the massive increase, expected increase on uh, of intermittent rest, wind uh, and, and PV, namely, uh, for Italy. And, um, of course, uh, uh, the TSO placing, placed a strong emphasis of on-grid expansion, but also a significant increase in storages, an additional 94 uh, gigawatt hour of storage capacity will complement the, the historical storage capacity uh, already uh, commissioned in Italy, in Italy that is represented by pumped hydrogen in the northern part of Italy. But um, in this scenario, uh, the TSO um, point out that the, the increase of storages should be concentrated in the southern part of Italy and uh, in the islands. Of course, according to the expected, uh, proportional to the expected growth uh, of, uh, of renewable capacity. So this is um, a scenario that uh, um, actually will follow the actual increase of PV and, and, and wind capacity. And, uh, but the TSO also uh, by defining the storage as a, one of the primary pillars of the new electricity system, um, also defined uh, some requirements and some, and also in terms of regulation, uh, in order to anticipate the the, the increase of renewable capacity. Uh, Terna uh, one year ago. Um, into this scenario uh, stated that uh, most of the vast majority of this capacity should uh, fall into a regulatory mechanism. And this is why the regulation uh, everywhere is uh, uh, important uh, for the electricity system. But if we talk about storages and batteries, uh, in Italy, um, the, the, the relevance of regulation is, is paramount because uh, the TSO uh, started to define this mechanism, this regulatory mechanism uh, that uh, um, is represented by auctions. And uh, so uh, into this scenario, the TSO um, pointed out that uh, in the northern part of Italy, the, 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 the development of storages in the northern part of Italy will be, uh, we don't need any uh, specific uh, regulatory uh, support. See, it will be um, a sort of merchant world, while the, 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 the rest of uh, capacity, that, and which is uh, almost 90% of the expected increase of capacity, will be uh, driven by uh, by auction that 
Today we know that uh, alcohol, uh, this this mechanism is called Max, uh, according to uh, the, the, the uh, public consultation uh, uh, published by the TSO uh, one month ago. Um, so you we can we can see that. Uh, um, two uh, emerging elements that uh, starting today to 2030, uh, the increase of storages will be massive uh, in order to uh, to integrate the, the renewable capacity. And on the other hand, uh, we can see that uh, uh, there's a sort of division by latitude uh, in revenue models and uh, route to market. And uh, so we have these two main uh, route to markets in Italy. On one side, we have the merchant participation uh, with a low impact of regulatory revenues. On the other side, the best storage auctions, max auction. So um, I, I want to try to, to summarize uh, how they differ in considering uh, uh, the, the, the participation to the electricity market at the revenue streams and uh, on uh, uh, for the idea I had the market uh, into the market so the, the energy markets uh, um, well no revenues are allowed uh, into the best auction scheme while the merchant uh, participation is a sort of plain vanilla uh, model uh, by uh, leveraging on the spreads uh, and uh, arbitrages uh, all over the 24 hours uh, during the day. But on the ancillary services uh, market, uh, of course, uh, there is uh, also the, the, the grid code define also uh, how storages and batteries can participate to balancing uh, services to the so-called secondary reserve uh, services. And uh, uh, in the next few years, also the uh, frequency control regulation will be uh, open, will become a tradable, uh, a tradable services. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, by, by involving also uh, batteries uh, and storages in general. But um, if our asset is uh, under the best uh, auction scheme, uh, we will be allowed to participate to ancillary services, but with very important constraints uh, in terms of bidding caps, but and mostly in terms of uh, a sort of profit sharing mechanism with the TSO. The proposal of the TSO is to uh, give back 95% of the uh, ancillary services uh, net profits uh, back to, to Terna. And uh, you, you perfectly understand how uh, this will impact. So into the best auction scheme, which is the uh, revenue stream, it comes from... Uh, a sort of tolling agreement uh, with the TSO, uh, which Terna will provide a fixed premium for 12 to 14 years. It should be uh, defined, stable, uh, fixed and predictable revenues that, of course, this can also allow the, the bankability of, of, of the asset. And uh, and into the the, the this fixed premium, uh, um, the premium will recover the capex, the opex, uh, and the return on investments. It's a sort of uh, um, return asset based uh, uh, mechanism, uh, and the, the, the owner of the storage so, should uh, um, operate the storage according to the schedule provided by third parties in the energy market uh, and by the ancillary services, uh, given the constraint that uh, I already mentioned. So um, the TSO uh, in the end will actually schedule the physical um, withdrawal and injection of these uh, assets. 
Uh, but the regulation also uh, lies on the merchant side uh, because uh, the capacity market auction, capacity market in Italy, it's a different mechanism from the max uh, uh, auction for, for dedicated only for storage. The capacity market is uh, uh, aimed to, to, um, to reach the adequacy uh, targets of the TSO and it's a mechanism uh, um, uh, open also for for storages for for batteries in the last auction in 2022 uh, a lot of storage capacity participated and be and have been awarded and um, uh, but of course it's a, an alternative uh, it's uh, alternative to the best auction to max and within the capacity market for new asset uh, um the, 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 the asset uh, will be provided by a, a 15 years uh, fixed uh, revenue. Uh, however, uh, new auctions still to be planned by the TSO and uh, we have oh, still uh, waiting to, to see if there uh, will be a room for new, uh, new assets uh, in the next auctions. Um, let me point out uh, that these two uh, revenue streams are not completely alternative. Uh, hybridization is allowed because I, um, um, an asset, uh, a player can uh, qualify a part of the capacity in the best, into the best auction and the, the remaining part of the capacity uh, participate uh, into the uh, merchant uh, route to market. So uh, it's also a strategic uh, option for, for operators in order to, um, to, to define which can be the revenue structure uh, according to the uh, specific uh, uh, and specific uh, risk uh, aversion. So uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, a very um, high overview because, uh, of course, the, the regulation is um, very detailed uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the devil hides <laughs> into the details. Uh, but uh, we can see these two uh, different uh, strategic approach in Italy. And, uh, but we now are waiting new uh, the, 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 the best auctions uh, that we are expected by the end on 24, uh, beginning on uh, 2025. So it takes time uh, on the base auctions, uh, on the best auction, max auction, uh, only uh, authorized uh, project can, can participate. So just let uh, let me uh, give you a, a look on which is uh, the state of play of uh, development in Italy. Well, we, for batteries, uh, now the TSO said that uh, there are about uh, uh, 35 gigawatts uh, which have requested uh, the connection. But um, the file project, the capacity that already started the, the permitting procedure is uh, today we track down uh, about 12 gigawatt in terms of uh, of capacity um, in terms of gigawatt hours uh, it depends because it depends on the duration of each single asset and we can see that the distribution all over Italy is uh, quite the same um, of the distribution expected by the TSO uh, into the scenario in 2030. So uh, about 50% of the capacity is in the central south and south and Calabria uh, regions, while uh, uh, um, about thirteen uh, percent in the northern I in the northern Italy and one third in Sardinia and Sicily uh, together. And um, I, I wanted also to to point out 
the uh, permitted or the permitted rate of permitted capacity uh, against the the total and uh, uh, in, in in development that uh, started the, the permitting procedure, um, where we can see a very different approach, zone by zone, and uh, in south and uh, it's not easy to uh, get the, the permit, but uh, now we are seeing uh, uh, an increasing uh, uh, rate of, of permitted capacity. The total permitted capacity in Italy is now 3.5 gigawatt. Um, so I hope to uh, to, uh, to get to, to provide it a uh, quite uh, clear overview of the market and I think that uh, also Christina can uh, provide uh, uh, relevant insights uh, also for the permitting procedures. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrea, how simple you've presented it, but how complicated is this market? Oh my God, I think we're all still needing you know uh, there is a bunch of questions there and I think we need to go a little bit more in depth of how all these mechanisms work however thank you very much for the presentation uh, if you can stop sharing now I just wanted to say yeah. one that the presentations are going to be available we are going to send them to you so you can have the opportunity to see them again so don't worry as you saw also Andrea's email was on the presentation so you're going to be able to also contact him uh, Andrea, if you don't mind, you can also put your email maybe in the chat for people who need it. And Christina, we can see for some reason on the right hand side a menu that says Adobe Export PDF Converti. Can you get rid of that for us? Uh, maybe, I don't know where actually. Um, try, try clicking there. There is like a little um, arrow at the top and see if it goes back in. And uh, whilst Christina just does this, just to let you know, we've seen the questions, keep sending them. No, same again, uh, Christina. Click in there, in that arrow, and see if it goes. There, let's see. No, but it's not gonna work, is it? Uh, I think, I mean, it doesn't matter. We can see it, but it's a shame we cannot see it in like a, a full, I think it's probably just an IT thing. Uh, don't worry. We can see the full screen, the full actually slide. So this is by the by. If you just uh, put your, your microphone and go for it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I asked my, my secretary to come, so I, I, I do hope that this uh, disturbing element uh, will disappear. Uh, I would start uh, from uh, what uh, exactly Andrea introduced to you on the fact that what is relevant uh, in order to be an active uh, player of this market and particularly on the future market is to have a best storage system authorized. And uh, it's a matter of fact that in this respect the market uh, uh, in Italy from uh, an authorization perspective, so I mean uh, from uh, the regulatory framework uh, that allowed investors to understand uh, which kind of authorization needed to be requested in order to build and operate the BES uh, is quite new even though the concept of BES uh, is not new. Uh, in my first slide, I just uh, uh, put the uh, uh, emphasis on the definition on what uh, uh, a storage, a battery storage is, and as you can see, the definition has been provided by the legislator in 2021 so quite quite recent even though there was a definition of best of asset provided by the energy authority that is a rare the regulator that already consider 
those assets as a, an element on of the market and uh, the definition that we can find uh, in the Arera resolution uh, is quite simple because uh, it, it, it is considered the storage as, as a device that can absorb and release the electrical services and uh, the, the Arera resolution saw the definition more from a grid a part of connection so the best was considered something that was able to inject the power into the grid and uh, uh, the, the, the topic on the, the regulation uh, as I said um, started very very recently uh, but the legislator uh, immediately understood that the the, 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 the market was needed to be provided of a very clear picture in order to give the certainty of what would be the authority, the authority in charge for issuing the authorization, what would be the type of permit to be requested and if an environmental assessment uh, of those uh, assets was needed. So I can, as you can see from this slide, very simple, that starting from 2020 uh, until 2023, a number of amendments in the legislation was made. And this why? Because at the beginning, they understood that a clear regulation for storage was needed because the authority, apart from the ministry, uh, that uh, wa was uh, more used to understand what a best is, because the ministry, the competent ministry, the MASE, uh, authorized the pilot project built by Terna, so by the TSO. So while at the ministerial level there were people able to understand what ABES is, which kind of infrastructure ABES is, because the, uh, the, the competence in the authorization is not only concentrated at national level, but is spread at regional level and municipality level, the legislation was needed in order to allow all the authority involved to understand what the storage is, because it's not a production facility. The authority were able to authorize production facility like cogeneration plant, renewable plant, but the storage is an infrastructure that store energy and inject energy, but the energy is produced by another asset. This is the reason why the, the legislator was so bulimic in the in the situation um, those are the main authorization the main type of authorization authorization procedure that uh, 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 a market advisor c'è una cosa qua should uh, decide to which implement come si fa a togliere questa uh, depending on the type of uh, the uh, the type of uh, the infrastructure to be implemented so the authorization available are potentially the single authorization that could be issued by a region or by the MASE that is the national authority the competent ministry or the simplified procedure that is called PASS uh, so a simplified procedure issued by the municipality or to certain extent edilizia libera that means that you can authorize a best asset without asking any kind of authorization for building and operating the plant provided that of course you have the availability of the land where the best should be built, the connection solution, the fact that your best has a power capacity less than 10 megawatt, and the only thing you need in terms of uh, 
permit is not the authorization of building and operating the plant, but you could need a landscape authorization or a fire prevention authorization. So depending on the characteristic of the land. So if you if the land selected is affected by a landscape restriction, you should ask to the landscape authority the authorization. But for building the plant, you don't need anything. Okay. Uh, this is um, the, um, the, the, the pitch. Then go in more detail on the standalone storage system. The standalone are the assets that are not connected to other uh, production units, are standalone and as uh, just explaining, you can authorize the standalone uh, without asking the authorization if they are lower, uh, they have a capacity lower than 10 megawatt. Starting from 10 megawatt up to 10 megawatt, there are two types of authorization available either the pass, the simplified procedure, or the single authorization. When the pass is available, pass, what does it mean? First of all, the competent authority is the municipality. The municipality in the territory in which your asset will be built. The condition provided by the law in order to allow a, a BES to be authorized, a standalone BES to be authorized through the pass, are the conditions that I listed in the first part of the slide. So all the three conditions consider they have to be in place. So in order to use the pass, that in case uh, uh, of absence on a, of any kind of restriction, landscape, whatever, the pass can be perfected in 30 days, so simply 30 days, but the condition is that the location of the area identified is within an industrial area where there are industrial plant of any nature, meaning also operating, non-operating, renewable, cogeneration, whatever. The destination of the land should be compatible with the, the, these infrastructures, so it should be, for instance, it cannot be in case uh, is an area where uh, there is no the possibility to build this kind of asset, and the height uh, of the infrastructure and the area occupied should be within the industrial area and the height of the, of the, the best should be not higher than the infrastructure already existing in the area in which the best should be built. So those are the conditions for using the pass so 30 days for everything, despite the power capacity of the best. If one of those uh, conditions are not met, you should go for the single authorization. The single authorization can be provided by either the region or the uh, ministry of the MASE, the, the Ministry of uh, Economy and Environmental. Um, again, also in this respect, the, 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 um, sorry, also in this respect, uh, the uh, single authorization can be uh, issued by the MASE in case uh, you want to build this standalone project in non-industrial area. If you are in industrial area, you should go for the region. In non-industrial area, with a certain capacity of the storage, you should go at ministerial level. Um, again, if you go for ministry, you can find uh, 
people who are very well prepared in understanding what a storage is. Region by region, it depends on how uh, clever, I would say, are the employee. In case the best, the storage is not standalone, but it is integrated with a renewable plant, the situation is different. First of all, the legislator uh, specified that uh, the, the, the storage integrated to a renewable plant is considered as an infrastructure, okay, as an infrastructure that connect the plant to the grid is an infrastructure of, of as a part of the asset and it could be the authorization the single authorization of the pass or the pass so the simplified procedure depending on if the renewable plant to which the best is connected is yet to be built so it's not in operation or if it is built the area in which the belt will be built is a new area. So it's an area that is out of the area occupied by the, um, the renewable plant. While the pass is, can be used when the plant is already existing and in operation or is already authorized but not in operation and you don't occupy new area. This is the picture. The main topic in order to allow you to understand how quick could be the procedure in case you decide to go for standalone project and not integrated is the environmental topic. At the beginning the legislator didn't touch this point but then clarified that in case of standalone project the environmental assessment is not needed at all even though you wanted to build a 300 megawatt project or say even though is the project is very big they don't consider the size of the project they say in case of standalone you have not to pass through the environmental assessment what does it mean this means that you can get the authorization even the, the most complicated so the single authorization issued by the region or by the MASE in 60 days so if you provide an application with all the paper in order you can get the authorization in 60 days in case they are not standalone so they are integrated with a, a renewable plant an environmental assessment should be should be needed if the main plant to which the best will be integrated to has passed the environmental assessment. So the environmental assessment of the best could be requested in case the best is integrated to a renewable plant that passes an environmental assessment. To these general rules, there is an exception that has been provided very recently because the legislator, as I stated, is very bulimic, has been very bulimic, and in order to speed up the authorization path, they made an exception for the environmental assessment that is valid until 30 June 2024 in case the uh, storage are connected to uh, photovoltaic plant up to a capacity of 30 megawatt if the area has already passed an environmental strategic assessment positive a bus positive or in case um, the, the, the uh, building of a BES is a part of a more complex uh, procedure that is a procedure concerning the renovation or revamping or repowering of existing photovoltaic plant up to 50 megawatt if in this project of revamping or renovation you include also a BES up to 50 megawatt you can be exempted from the environmental assessment and then there is another sorry 
uh, exception in case you occupy new land through the re renewable of the plant of the existing PV plant uh, but uh, is uh, in uh, an area that is not uh, far from uh, the area occupied by the solar plant of uh, 500 uh, meter very last follow of, of course uh, the authorization I describe are the main one then you when you build uh, a storage plant either minor authorization can be requested are minor are related to the fire prevention certificate or something related to the, the health and safety but are minor and in case you go for the single authorization, the EU, all those minor authorization are included in the main one. I think that uh, I provide everything uh, as a picture. I don't know, Belen, if I stay in within my time. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you, Christina. Uh, there is a lot of follow-up questions for you, so clearly there is still things that... Uh, he responded, but thank you very much for giving us a picture. And I think it's great because we have still like 17 uh, minutes for questions or 18. Let me take this presentation off so that we can see you both. And then we'll go to the questions. Uh, oh, you've done it. Okay, excellent. Okay. So thank you very much to both of you. Thank you for all the information. We have a bunch of questions open. Before that, I just wanted to ask you each a question that I think is important. And then we'll launch into the questions that people Let's try and get, get like the responses shortish so that we can respond to everyone if we can. We do have quite a lot of questions. So the first, I'm going to ask Andrea to give Christina a little break. <laughs> it's a full merchant revenue mobile without regulatory support enough for reaching, for being profitable, essentially. Uh, good long duration assets uh, be more competitive into a max Two questions. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, we think that, um, according to, to also the results of our simulation or our modeling, the uh, a pure full merchant approach uh, can be very risky and not enough for reaching uh, profitability. Mm. This is why I, I pointed out that to the merchant model, a capacity market support uh, would be needed, but uh, of course it depends on the possibility of the capacity market. But let me um, point out that uh, um, the problem is that uh, we expect an increase of renewable energy that will uh, um, increase the need of flexibility in the market, so the market opportunities for storages, but also you expect a relevant increase of storage capacity. So the saturation of uh, uh, flexibility opportunities coming from other storages, uh, can, it's an issue for merchant model, especially if the majority of asset will be commissioned uh, by regulatory tools like the Max Auction, which are not uh, exposed to the volatility of merchant revenues, but they receive fixed premium outside from the spot market. Thank you very much. And a question for Christina is, uh, Christina, as it is, is it enough um, regulatory-wise, in, reg in terms of regulation, do we have enough now to attract investment into BES? Um, can we consider BES bankable in Italy right now from the authorization perspective? Uh, I would say absolutely yes. They are bankable and particularly in case the BES are authorized through express authorization, meaning uh, the AU, the single authorization, or also the pass that can be attested by the municipality. There are, there could be 
more concern about the possibility, as explained uh, before, to authorize uh, standalone uh, uh, bass that have a capacity lower than 10 megawatt to certain conditions. This is there was also a question in, in this respect where there is no permit authorization because it's a free situation, it's a delizia libera. This is something provided by the law, so if you meet the requisite, you are authorized. No one can contest this, but we know for experience that the banks are not really always confident on the fact that the right authorization was issued, even though there is an opinion given by the lawyer, if they don't see the piece of paper. Thank you very much, Christina. Still, like, it seems clear, but it's not quite right. It's one of these things. Okay, let me read these questions. And, you know, I'd appreciate, I mean, I'm going to start with the first one from Paolo Mastro Piero, Mastro Pietro, sorry. But if you have any others that you'd like to answer, just let me know, okay, so that we can answer those. Okay, so first is the Italian support mechanism for storage, or MAXE, seems a strongly regulated scheme if compared with other European support mechanisms in Europe for example, Greece or Hungary, based on contracts for difference on market revenues. I would have expected a stronger reaction from market agents. Is, not a better, uh, is it not better for project developers to make uh, a more market-oriented kind of support? Andrea, I'm going to start with you. If you want to weigh in, Christina, yeah. later. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm aware that uh, the, the, the regulation uh, impact the perimeter in Italy uh, for in general and for storage uh, in particular is very is very high, maybe too high. Uh, just um, in, into the market, uh, there is a fixed premium and the uh, merchant revenues are squeezed or almost. Uh, uh, zeroed by the profit sharing mechanism. Uh, and during the public consultation, uh, many players, many operators um, uh, argued that uh, a more uh, open to market mechanism uh, would be more appreciated, would be better. Um, I agree with, with that because also you, you can uh, that it's not just on an on off option you can also mitigate the impact of regulation by providing uh, stable revenues but uh, i want to point out uh, that the merchant uh, opportunity can be reached uh, by hybridization of uh, uh, merchant models. So uh, it's not uh, 100%, there's not a need to, to, to qualify 100% capacity into the auctions, but uh, an, a, a mixed approach uh, uh, in order to reach bankability on one side and be exposed to uh, um, increase of opportunities or risk uh, for the other side of profitability uh, can be worth to be evaluated by, by operators. Thank you very much, Andrea. I don't know if you want to add anything, Christina. If not, we can... I think that this point touched by Andrea is correct because the banks, of course, always are looking for, let's say, regulatory assets. So uh, the, 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 the pure market base, uh, of course, doesn't allow the, the banks, and particularly if they are not very expert in the market to understand the return of the investment, so probably the mix. Uh, but I think that Andrea provided the clear, the clear picture. Right, thank you very much. Let's go then with some of these questions and please mark them for me if there is any specifically or, you know, just let me know. But um, Francesco asks, to stand a standalone uh, battery, uh, do you need to have rights on the land or you can expropriate it? Uh, okay, it depends. Uh, in case you got the single authorization, either issued by the region or by the ministerial authority, yes, you have the right to expropriate 
provided that uh, you inform the authority that you need to expropriate the land because are considered infrastructure of public interest, while in case you go for the, the simplified procedure, the pass, the pass is something that uh, doesn't allow you to acquire the land through the expropriation. Thank you very much. Um, for um, battery projects below 10 megawatts, what documentation would you recommend obtaining so that the project can be considered bankable? Uh, if you, uh, okay, uh, as I stated before, below 10 megawatts, you, co you, go, you can go for Edilizia Libera. Uh, uh, this means that, but in any case, you have to uh, acquire the other potential permit authorization is, if needed. Uh, the, the thing that you can try to do, unless uh, you can, you want to, in any case, ask for a more complicated, uh, let's say, but in any case, simple authorization. So the past, you could ask the municipality an attestation that even though there is no a formal authorization, the, the best has been authorized. Not sure that the municipality will be confident in providing this attestation. This is the reason why we always prefer to suggest to go through at least for the pass. Excellent. Okay, just one more and then I'll go with one of yours, um, uh, Andrea. Is there any indication in Turner's documentation about the height, I mean, of the fixed toll, which will be made under Maxe. So what they want to know is the toll for connecting to the grid, right? I understand. Uh, no, this, for the connection, the cost the of the connection. One. Yeah, the cost of connection is a uh, different matters. It re regulated uh, uh, regardless by uh, if uh, you uh, participate to Max or to Merchant uh, is uh, related to the um, STMG, that is uh, the, the, the cost provided by the TSO, expected cost provided by the TSO for connecting this, a specific asset. Uh, it's proportional to the land, uh, proportional to the, the, the grid uh, works uh, and and so on are different it's always the same, same topics show. yeah yeah okay. it's the same uh, yeah any asset um okay this i think is important what happens to other energy storage technologies and here there are two mentioned compressed air and magnetic energy storage but i mean it doesn't have to be this right it could be any um do they follow the same simplified permitting uh christina they should be, even though it could be some doubt, because uh, as I explained before, there is a specific definition uh, of what is provided uh, by law for asset. So, it pro provided that the technology doesn't alter the definition of best, they can go. If, because the, the, the different technology can change something in the definition of the best provided by the law, the authority could be a little bit in trouble or in doubt. Excellent, thank you. Uh, okay, a couple, that you, Andrea, one is, am I allowed to be part of my battery energy storage system on Max and I'm part of it on the capacity market? There was a bunch of questions about this, right? And how yeah. to do it and whatnot. So can you maybe... Yeah, yeah. I, I, about that? yeah. I, I saw many questions about the relationship between Max and capacity market. Well, first of all, Max is a, a mechanism different from the capacity market uh, with uh, uh, defined with the targets of flexibility of the electricity system needs. The capacity market is for adequacy. So uh, one mechanism will not exclude the other uh, because they are uh, aimed at solving different problems for the TSO, of course, uh, uh, the, the capacity installed uh, with max uh, auction can provide indirectly uh, also a part of adequacy that the TSO should consider in uh, 
defining the needs for the capacity market, but um, there's not a direct relationship. And from the uh, asset owner point of view, uh, you cannot overlap max uh, and capacity market uh, uh, during the, even if uh, you split the storage uh, participation max and merchant, during the agreement, the so-called tolling agreement uh, with Tegna. So during the um, 12 to 14 years of fixed premium provided by Max, you cannot also qualify the same asset into the capacity market. But at the end, uh, starting the uh, first year without the fixed premium, you can participate to the capacity market by qualifying your asset as an existing asset, not so for 15 years fixed premium, but year by year uh, capacity um, uh, providing uh, the, the, the capacity av availability. So um, at the end of the uh, fixed premium of the market of max you can participate to the capacity market not to together but the both mechanisms will uh, will be in place over time okay thank you very much and just one more and then christina check and see if you can find one or two more because we are running out of time regarding the capacity market uh is it a battery energy storage system market or on only for an open cycle gas engine, renewable producers don't have a natural hedge against the spread. Julia Muya, the question marked it. Is for me or for Andrea? For Andrea. Shall I read it again? Yeah, it's yeah. The I... that you marked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Is open also for for BES, the capacity market, and not just for thermoelectric plants, but um, um, of course uh, uh, it depends. Uh, as as I said, uh, it depends uh, on the room for new asset into the the capacity market. So uh, we do not expect that um, a high in the next auction a high uh, request of new capacity for adequacy into the capacity market uh, but you should wait uh, the the analysis as the, the scenario provided by ten but storages can participate uh, into the capacity market as I said alternatively, uh, to max. Okay, and one one question here quickly says: Is a lead is a lead battery allowed to participate in uh, in in the market? Um, well, um, into the max mechanism, Tegna defined two technologies: uh, lithium batteries and the pumping hydro storages for the. Uh, Auction dedicated and, and this for, hasn't changed, uh, right? They haven't reviewed. It doesn't change, but uh, uh, ten percent of the quota of the market can be uh, assigned, uh, if competitive, to other technologies uh, if uh, they met the they meet the same the same uh, requirements, the same performances of lithium batteries. So. Um, can be a risky game, uh, participate with other uh, kind of uh, technology at the moment, at the moment, because maybe that in the future can evolve. Okay, excellent. And one question for you, Christina. Um, how long can the authorization procedure for a battery energy storage system take based on the various procedures mentioned? Okay, if uh, the authority complies with the term, uh, it could be from uh, 30 days uh, up to maximum uh, six months, provided that an environmental assessment should be done. We faced a situation in the past where after one year, one year and a half, the authorization was not issued, but 
I think because the authority were, now, were not very aware of the, of the asset. So usually the, author, the authority takes time when they don't understand what the asset is. And just one question for the two of you, uh, uh, unless you want to answer something else, is uh, Evelyn here asks, do you think the capacity uh, available from Maxi will be mostly awarded for assets located in the south? This is an interesting question, right? Because it's about market design as much as anything else. So what do you think? I suppose this is a matter of opinion at this point. Uh, Christina, can I, can I answer first? Uh, yeah, uh, one minute, so. Yeah, um, uh, we, 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 we saw that uh, Taina is expecting uh, and uh, is quite a, uh, natural that is expecting a massive increase of uh, renewable in the southern part of Italy, in the island. So we expect that uh, it, the TSO focus will be to manage the integration there. And um, so most part of the capacity awarded into the uh, max auction will be in the southern part of Italy, in the island, because there is a mechanism that define the merit order curve of uh, bids uh, and adjust the merit order uh, by uh, the location of the project. So uh, project, I expect that this adjustment will uh, support uh, just in the merit order, uh, not just not providing higher revenues, but uh, in the merit order curve support uh, assets located in the southern part of Italy or in Sardinia, in Sicily, in particular. Christina? I have nothing to add to the answer. The only thing I can answer quickly another question I saw, uh, if the best are fair or not, for sure at the moment, the situation can change, but at the moment uh, uh, the standalone are not fair assets. Why it could be considered fair? They integrated with the fair, the fair asset because the integration means that the energy stored by the the BES is renewable uh, power. But the situation can change. Right. Thank you very much. And sorry, this is taking two minutes more than we thought. Uh, thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you very much, Christina, for sharing these pearls of wisdom with us. I think this is the beginning. The opportunity is massive. I think early next year we will know more about the auctions as they come out. But I'd just like to just take these 20 seconds to remind you of the event in Rome, the 16th, 17th of April, where you're going to meet Christina, you're going to meet Andrea, and you're going to meet a lot more people that are working specifically in the energy storage market. And I hope to see you there too. So thank you very much. And thank see you. you